Caught between a rock and a hard place with just 48 hours to go to the European summit on Brexit, a row between Britain and Spain over Gibraltar is threatening to undermine hopes that Europe's leaders can reach agreement on a joint declaration on the UK's future relationship with the EU. The Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has warned he will scupper any deal unless he gets the guarantees he wants on the future of the British overseas territory. He made the threat whilst on a trip to Cuba. And although Spain does not have veto powers, it's thought unlikely that Europe would sign up to any common statement without support from Madrid. Well, for the latest on this, I'm joined by our Brussels correspondent, Shona Murray. Um, good morning, Shona. Well, you know, for this, for Spain is continuing to raise the stakes on Gibraltar. Can you tell us about the latest developments? Yeah, indeed, a new level of brinkmanship here in Brussels uh, regarding this extraordinary council meeting on the 25th of November. Just when you think things were going to run a little bit smoother, we have this tweet from the Prime Minister of Spain. He reads, after my conversation with Theresa May, our position remains far away. My government will always defend the interests of Spain. If there are no changes, we will veto Brexit. I mean, they're incredibly harsh words for one member state, normally a very pro-European member state, Spain, to try to intervene and thwart what has been an incredibly difficult two years so far. Everybody's aware that the passage of this withdrawal agreement, the details in relation to the Irish backstop, the Irish border, uh, citizens' rights, the financial settlement, and now this uh, political declaration of future relationship, that it was painstaking to get to this point. And the Gibraltar issue, as far has been has been... Uh, sort of uh, it's, as it's been going on has been so really trundling along in, in a much more safer passage. I mean, I remember having conversations with diplomats over the past few months, and this was never supposed to be a big problem. But the Spanish have this issue with Article 184 in the withdrawal agreement, and it, and it basically establishes the UK and the EU will uh, have negotiations on its future relationship. And Spain wants to ensure that Gibraltar is not record, uh, included in that. Essentially, that Spain has the authority to negotiate the future of Gibraltar. Um, so it's unhappy happy with that. Now, they won't re reopen this withdrawal agreement because we've heard from leaders of member states and ministers. They say if you op reopen the withdrawal agreement, the withdrawal treaty for one country, then you'll have to do it for other countries, including, for example, people like Brexiteers who claim they can. But there's hope that the diplomats and the officials can get together within the coming days and do something within the future relationship, maybe an additional protocol, and sort this out. Now, the Prime Minister said there that he will veto Brexit. And, I mean, that is an incredibly uh, major thing to do. As I said, it's been a painstaking couple of years. And in actual fact, technically speaking, they can't because um, this is going to be voted under qualified majority voting. So if one member state decides to vote against, it actually won't scupper the deal. Nonetheless, we know that the EU likes to work on the basis of consensus. So it won't be a situation that Madrid's concerns are left out because that would just mean that the unity and the solidarity that we've sort of seen from member states over the past couple of years, particularly the past year of the Irish backstop, that that would dissipate. And you couldn't have, for example, a country like Ireland, which has been very grateful, uh, according to its Prime Minister, Leo Wagner, for the solidarity of member states, including Spain, for them to ignore the concerns of the Spanish. So it, it will be difficult, but um, sources I'm hearing say it, it should not be insurmountable. Well, Shona, let's just move on to another issue that's uh, obviously going to dominate that sum summit as well, and that's Britain's future trading partner with the EU. Can you tell us what's at stake there, Shona? Well, I mean, it's huge, obviously. Um, the, the EU is the, the richest internal market in the world. And the UK has said all along that even though it's leaving the EU, it wants as close as possible relationship, frictionless trade. And the more the close you stay, the, the more close you stay within the EU, the more closely aligned you'll have to be. And that goes against uh, what Brexiteers are desiring. So, as we know, there's this summit on Sunday and then there's this crucial vote on the day, 11th of December in the UK. So it's not sure that this deal is going to pass. And then we could be staring down the barrel of a no deal scenario. And I spoke to those in Rotterdam, Europe's biggest port, about how they're preparing for this no deal catastrophe. 
Rotterdam, home to Europe's biggest port, is watching the uncertainty in the UK over Brexit with real concern. The port will employ over 900 new customs officials to deal with the extra checks required if the UK leaves the EU without a deal. Voices from the business community are making their fears known in a bid to remind politicians to make sensible policy decisions. We are very concerned um, that we will see disruption uh, if in, in the event of a no deal. Um, and again, delays and so on and congestions. So we are concerned and we need clarity. Officials expect a 100% increase in export inspections and ferry operators warn of the end to seamless trade with Britain. The fallback would be a WTO scenario um, if there is no deal reached. Um, and what that would mean is basically that there will be full controls uh, and so on, very much similar to trade with other third-party countries where there are no other special arrangements. Stenoline, which runs four or five ships a day to British ports, is worried about delays to cargoes of fresh produce, fresh food or even something more sentimental. Cut flowers. You should come here just before Valentine's Day. It's crazy busy. And this is another example why it's so important with a continuous free flow. Because imagine if the flowers arrive on the 15th of February. That's not very good, is it? And we carry a lot of those flowers to make sure that they are delivered on time, the bouquets for, for, for the loved ones. Valentine's Day, just another possible casualty of a no-deal Brexit. Now, of course, now, of course, we uh, we know that tomorrow or on Sunday we have this uh, agreement and the withdrawal treaty, which includes a political declaration on the future partnership between the EU and the UK, and that really mainly deals with trade. So it's hoped that, as well as some other detail, can get the UK over the line to ensure it doesn't get over the cliff into this no deal scenario. Other than that, the European Commission, the member states, they all have to prepare for that nonetheless.